What is up, Diecast Collectors? This is OBB, the Diecast News Guy, and welcome everybody to a very special Diecast review for you guys. As you guys already probably know that there's this big race coming up known as the 24 Hours of Daytona, and since this is going to be my third year going to that race, I decided, what the hell, let's review some Diecasts that I picked up all the way back at Road Atlanta from last year for my first time at PT Le Mans. And this one in particular, while it may not be IMSA related, it still is a really cool diecast I would pre recommend picking up for my good friends at Gutswear Racing. So check them out. They will be at the Rolex 24 midway for uh, throughout this whole weekend. But today it is going to be on a mini GT diecast. And you know how much I love these things. But this is on a, uh, well, not an IMSA car, but a wet car from mini GT. This is the 24 Hours of Le Mans winner from 2019. Well, quote unquote, winner of the uh, number 85 Ford GT LM GT GTE AM for Ki for uh, Ben Keening Motorsports. Now, we're probably getting more to this in a second, but my God, you got to admit, man, I mean, th this is one of the most iconic liveries that I never thought that we were going to get in diecast form, but we did it, man. I mean, sure, it's a few years later, but it still is pretty cool. But you can see we got ourselves the diecast right here with the box, the clamshell packaging, and you see it's one of 2,400, but can't get enough of Mini GT. I might have said Greenlight probably has the best diecast quality. Well, I think Mini GT probably, um, they, they have you guys beat because this right here is pretty much a work of art. And like I said, very limited quantity. So if you can find this anywhere, definitely recommend picking up. But let's go ahead and start the diecast review the official unboxing of the mini gt diecast review of the 24 hours of le mans winner driven by kidding motorsports and alrighty, folks we got this diecast out of its box but before we get things started as we usually do with these diecast reviews let's look at the accessory that comes with this which if anybody who's a huge fan of the nascar authentics diecast from um, spin master this will look pretty familiar because if you guys already know since clamshell packaging is, abs is an absolute bitch to open up uh luckily mini gt always comes with a collector box that you can easily put in right here at gc this is a collector's model not suitable for uh for under 14 so not really a toy so that kind of defeats that argument of oh every 164 is a toy no this is a collector model because look at this man it is a die cast so the wheels roll and there's a lot of cool uh, durable pieces um but yeah i thought that was pretty cool but now back to the die cast and of course many of you guys are going to be just like wow this thing pretty much rocks i mean if anybody who's a big fan of the of the good old four gts which i know um um, kind of appropriate time to actually review this because if you guys already know Ford actually has now returned back to IMSA with the brand new Ford Mustangs that they have which of course we're also going to be seeing that on the uh, Xfinity and Cup cars as well with the Dark Horse model but this is really cool the, uh, the, the, the there's a really cool history about this car guys winning the overall class in the 2019 24 hours of Le Mans which you guys already know I mean our big 24 hours race is coming up on Saturday and Sunday uh, for, the, for the states but down by where France is this is the this is basically well, one of the most prestigious I mean, you, you can't call yourself a motorsports fan if you have not at least watched one of the 24 Hours of Le Mans alright, I mean, I gotta admit, I am kind of a late bloomer when it comes to that stuff, but let me tell you what, man if I ever had the privilege to actually see a car like this or anywhere else, it would be at the Le Mans I mean, we have seen, you know, the wind sponsorship many times before, but with this sponsor alone, I mean, it's pretty iconic to say the least, but the 4 GT, I know a lot of people do kind of miss these 4 GTs, and I do as well, um, which, by the way, getting to the top second person, we'll get to that in a second, because I do have quite a collection of 4 GT diecasts, um, but this is the uh, one of the first that we actually got from Mini GT, I know they also did make the... Um, I think what like the uh, the actual uh, uh, base livery I think when they ran that at Le Mans as well but this is the uh, quote unquote overall winner because yeah this car actually did one at the 24 hours of Le Mans uh, as you guys know the winners were actually with Ben Keating and then along with I'm probably going to absolutely butcher these names uh, I believe the Brazilian driver of Felipe Fraga and um, I think this is a Dutch name if I'm not mistaken but um, Yaron Bleakmolen I believe if I'm not mistaken so um, I know you're probably never hearing those words come my mouth but um, we will get some more in a second guys but I want to show you guys the fine details of what you're picking up and you guys are probably going to want to ask me the million dollar question of the day how much are these things well Gutsware sells them for 20 bucks and I know a lot of people are going to be like 20 bucks that's pretty steep but look at the amount of quality and detail that you get on this man this is I mean look you get real plastic headlights you get um, you know a, a full metal die cast chassis all right with rubber uh, mirrors which of course I'm glad it's rubber I mean it actually looks pretty good 
metal chassis, rubber wheels. I mean, yeah, there's no Michelin printing right here, but look how small those Michelin logos would be if they actually put that on the uh, sidewall. But you see, there's so many great details. You see the windshield wiper is actually not a decal. It's actually molded in um, for performance. So many great details, man. You see the 24 hours of Le Mans. You have the American flag. You see all the little air vents right there. I mean, this is a perfectly great a really good looking uh, die cast. I mean, for a 164 scale, I mean, if any guys actually are brave enough to get the 143rd or the 118 scale die cast, but he's looking at this, it's even uh, where the air flakes are right there on the side, right by the Michelin man. Those are also molded in. I mean, just absolutely pristine quality. I mean, well, the only thing I will have to say that these rubber uh, mirrors absolutely, uh, as you can see, they're kind of like hanging low a little bit, like if you know what I mean. So that's the only thing that does suck. It kind of looks like that one's about to break off. So it's pretty unfortunate, but still though, tremendous quality that we got right here. And just so you guys are not bullshitting you, that is rubber, because I can pinch it. But you see, I think what like even, uh, yeah, I mean the bottom parts are plastic right here, but this part is metal though. Don't be fooled. And there's even uh, screws right there, as I almost did a kamikaze with that mirror right there. But just great detail. Look at that. You can even see where the air vents are right there on the on the side, on the side pods, or where you want to call those, the driver's name. So many great details. I mean, just look at this mold, man. So great. I mean... Say what you want. I know. That's, uh, I mean, if you're if you're not the biggest Ford fan, I'm sure this car is not going to really. I guess you could say, quote unquote, uh, you know, turn on your racing gears. But it still is a nice livery, man. I mean, I always have a soft spot with these uh, with this livery with the wins car. Um, you see, we got the Texas Strong logo right there, which you guys know of uh, that incident that happened. Tint World. We got more Michelin Men. God dang. Um, I don't know. I might have to do some shenanigans with the Michelin Men when we get to the Rolex, because you know your boy OBB is gonna be there for 24 hours. So I don't know. Maybe I should do a vlog of that shit. But uh, <laughs> let's see if it's ports they are actually molded into all these other cool sponsors they see right there on the side but just look at this man just i i i would go ahead and point out every single sponsor on this but honestly with my ideology if you guys can see it with this you know pro grade camera i got uh from the good old samsung galaxy s23 lineup but you see on the back, we got even more tremendous detail. Look at this, man. There's even, I think it's kind of hard to tell, but look, right below where the diffuser is, as it was kind of overexposed right there, we even see some uh, some parts of the differential and like parts of the uh, um, underneath the car, which is pretty cool. I mean, look at that, man. Look, that that is like individual pieces of plastic for the headlights, the exhaust ports, you name it, man. Really, and I mean absolutely substantial uh, good quality that we got. And yeah, this mirror, uh, not mirror, I mean, heck. As you can see, I'm getting so excited about this car, I don't even know what the terminology is. I mean, it, it's a beautiful car. I will say that. It's got to be, because it was 20 bucks. <laughs> but, wow, man. But, of course, this paint scheme is going to be pretty familiar, because if you guys don't know, I mean, we got ourselves the uh, one of the most... I mean, he's mostly considered a legend when it comes to sports car racing and endurance racing. Good old Ben Keating, all right? I'm not really familiar with the other two, but let me say one thing about Ben Keating. This guy has practically won everything you can think of when it comes to sports car racing. I mean, hell, he, I mean, I think like the most recent accomplishment he had was actually, ironically, um, he was the champion for the 2021 WeatherTech LMP2 champion, which ironically, I'm saying that because guess what? This guy is starting on the pole for the Rolex 24 for LMP2. So my prediction is he's probably going to have a shot, but we'll see what happens. I mean, he has only won one Rolex 24 before, as far as I know. I think it was in 15. But what's interesting about this car is that, yes, because I was trying to say, okay, why was this car said, quote unquote, the winner? Well, it technically was. All right. But I think a day later, I guess this car was actually one of the first cars that probably joined the list of getting disqualified <laughs> because I guess there was something to do with, I guess this car just had too much of a big uh, fueling capacity, which in shorter terms to say that uh, for all you NASCAR fans, the fuel tank was pretty darn big. So yeah, that's why this car was illegal. Um, so pretty unfortunate because my God, I mean, what a cool livery this is. But now let's get on to a slap side comparison, which I know I usually like to do these. So right here, I have ourselves a Hot Wheels car culture car, ironically from another car that I actually raced at the Rolex 24. But I just want to show you guys the fine details because see right there, I mean, yeah, this die cast, you probably could get out your Walmarts from a few years ago. And it is some good quality. I mean, this is a much more premium. This is more of the premium line that we got for Hot Wheels, which by the way, if you guys haven't, uh, if you guys haven't checked out my channel yet, I do have a die cast review of this. So if you want to check that out, I'll probably put it down in the title cards, but here's a comparison for you guys so you can see just really good detail on the Mini GT. Hot Wheels is not too bad as well, but you can definitely see it's not decals. 
and you see everything's more crystal clear. We kind of got those fuzzy decals that, you know, Lionel also usually has, so I didn't realize that they were also on Hot Wheels. But still is pretty nice regardless, but just they go up and beyond with the casting on the Mini GD cars. Just show you how great these are. And I'm not just trying to gloat it and be like, hey, you know, these cars are great. No, this is a freaking, this is a collector. This is more like a toy. So <laughs> if you want to say that right there, I mean, man, if you guys are convinced to spend $20 on this, I mean, I'm sorry, man. I mean, heck. I, I think it's worth the extra seven or eight bucks than what you get from a Lionel NASCAR car. But I don't know. I just thought that would be a cool comparison to show you guys. And of course, this is plastic on the bottom and this is metal. But yeah, I can't think of the fine folks at Mini GT. And if you guys are ready for some more Mini GT diecast reviews, feel free to hit that subscribe button, comment, and like this video as well. Because not only it does show your guys' support on this channel, it does also help me out fighting with the YouTube algorithm. But anyways, hope you guys have a good weekend. Watch some Rolex 24. And thank you guys so much for watching this diecast review of the 2019 quote-unquote Le Mans winner for uh, the wins for GT driven by Ben Keening for Keening Motorsports. And I will see you guys next time. And yeah, I'm out of here. I'm out of here, y'all.